have Alzheimer's disease. Is this genetic? A 72-year-old woman presents with three years of worsening memory difficulties, which are now impacting her daily functioning. Her evaluation is consistent with a mild dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. You discuss medications to target symptoms, strategies to promote brain health, safety considerations, and future expectations. At the end of the visit, she shares something that worries her. She has heard that Alzheimer's can run in families. She asks, is this genetic? Am I going to pass this on to my kids? Inherited factors are widely perceived to play a role in the development of Alzheimer's disease. However, the precise role of genetics in Alzheimer's can be confusing, owing to variable terminology, evolving research, and knowledge gaps. Effective counseling on this highly charged issue is crucial to optimizing care. We'll highlight some key points here to ease that process. When patients ask, is Alzheimer's disease genetic, what they may have in mind is classically genetic, a situation in which an affected patient carries a mutation, leaving their children with a very high, even 50% chance of developing the same disease. It can be valuable to explore this perception and reassure patients that almost all cases of Alzheimer's disease do not fit this model. Over 95% of the time, Alzheimer's disease is sporadic, meaning that the disease results from a combination of multiple provoking or protecting factors, some inherited, others related to lifestyle or environment. Having a first-degree relative with the disease is associated with slightly increased risk, reflecting that genetics plays a part, but is not purely determinative. In this way, sporadic Alzheimer's disease is kind of like chili. Many ingredients go into the pot, and the recipe can differ across houses. For sporadic Alzheimer's disease, the strongest known genetic risk factor is the ApoE E4 allele. It's important to remember that ApoE E4 is present in around 25% of the general population, and is neither necessary nor sufficient for the development of Alzheimer's disease. As such, testing for ApoE or other genes which more modestly influence risk in a polygenic manner is not currently recommended in the clinical evaluation of cognitive symptoms or impairment. Rarely, mutations in genes such as presenilin 1 or 2 or amyloid precursor protein can cause forms of Alzheimer's disease that are inherited in a true autosomal dominant fashion. Clues that should raise suspicion for this include very early onset, for example, in the 40s or 50s, multiple affected first-degree relatives, or atypical clinical features such as an aggressive course or coexistence of seizures. However, it is worth noting that the vast majority of young-onset Alzheimer's cases are still sporadic. It is also important to recognize that not everyone with one of these mutations has a family history of affected relatives. This highlights the importance of considering the whole clinical picture when assessing the need for further evaluation. Patients with Alzheimer's disease often ask whether their family members are at risk. Being equipped with appropriate data, language, and resources is crucial to optimally counsel patients and their families. Patients with symptoms at a very young age, an extensive family history, or atypical clinical features are relatively more likely to have a causative genetic mutation. In these rare cases, it may be appropriate to refer to a cognitive behavioral neurologist and or a clinical geneticist to discuss further testing. For more information on the genetic architecture of Alzheimer's disease, please see the course resources.